Hello everyone, welcome back to the Stargazer Division. I am once again the analyst Elikazams, here with the St. Louis Selgalios. Yo! And we have a game of the week now, the Golden State Durants versus the Frederick Klepkeys. Two really, really strong teams, two really strong opponents. We will see how it goes. Uh, Off rip, this looks like a... Uh... Spectrier can uh, potentially go immediately kind of lead here. with speed boost. Interesting. Speed boost tusk. Surely this is Gale Wings with like air slash. Uh, from what I remember, the I, I got sent. I won't open it because I'm the one recording. But I got sent the sets. I think this is like mental herb or something, or like or, or like a, a, a copy stats herb. Um, talent oh, flame. Mirror, herb. mirror herb, mirror herb, talent flame, which is interesting. Mm. It was either oh, mirror herb or mental herb. It was some herb. I can't remember exactly. That's tough. Is it flame body though, or is it gale wings? Um, uh, here I, I will pull it up. Yeah, it's mirror herb, flame body. Oh. Uh... Yeah, so he correctly like, he... like a champ. Yeah, he correctly predicts the rock slide, which is smart. Leading with your booster speed guy immediately is an interesting uh, position, but it did give him momentum early. It forces Orange to react, so that's good. Squillfish is Haze, Toxic Spikes, Taunt, Barbarage, Max Spadef, a Violate. So even at minus one attack, this Earthquake or Headlong Rush probably still does a boatload of damage. I think Orange is thinking here pretty hard about what he wants to do exactly. I, yeah, I think he has to. Positioning is key here around this Tusk. This Tusk fucks him up really bad. Yeah. Booster speed. Makes sense. I will say Spectre looks pretty good in this game. Obviously, Arboliva is here. I'm assuming the Arboliva is going to try and stay normal type for as long as it possibly can. It might not even be Terra. It might be Terra Reverb Room. So, we're really looking at Okay, Garchomp comes out. Uh, pretty good switch by Dawn. Obviously, this Garchomp can have Fire Blast. I'll check if it does. It does. So this Garchomp does have Fire Blast. If it's Spideff Corviknight, I'm guessing it still like straight up switches to Talon Flame on the bulk up. Oh, and there's the Mirror Herb gets activated. So I think this Mirror Herb he was trying to get it activated for like a shift gear. So getting it activated here is pre is pretty unfortunate. Um, but obviously he's still plus one attack, plus one defense, so that's good. He can fire off like a Flare Blitz, but uh, both the moves, Flare Blitz and Acrobatics, that this thing has are resisted by Lantern. So I, I don't think this is like a sweep or anything from the Talon Flame. I do all. like the Mirror Herb though on this. Yeah, um, I, I, I think it's for a, a shift gear, would be my guess. Yeah. Or like, you know, bulk up Tusk. But but this positioning, you know, I, I think Lantern can come out. Um, honestly, he could stay in and you turn out, but I, he doesn't really have anything to do to Talonflame. So I, I'm guessing he's going to switch, if I had to guess. He doesn't really want to take that chip for no real reason. When you have a perfectly viable uh, Lantern right there. Yeah. Uh, he has brought Lantern every single week, which is interesting. Lantern's been pretty key on this team. So they're both kind of weighing their options. I think Orange is a, a little bit on the back foot right now. He's lost his uh, his Mirror Herb already. He's kind of, uh, yeah, see, he Flare Bless. He doesn't do nearly enough. Takes some chip. Uh, and now there's a the uh, Volt Switch coming from Lantern. You could go Garchomp, but do you really want to risk getting burned? I guess you can, because you are mixed. You have Fire Blast at least to do damage to Corviknight. But, uh, you know, he has uh, all physical moves besides that, so I don't know if he wants to risk getting burned from a Skull, um, which could very viably come out. The safe play is probably like Quillfish Isui, since it's Max Spadef. But that could also get burned, but that's obviously uh, much less significant than your Garchomp getting burned. The the Tinkaton is also another option. Uh, the Tinkaton is like full. Uh, it's got player off and knock off, but it has like no uh, a attack investment. So if it gets burned, Whirlpool. he does go Garchomp. Okay, 
Whirlpool comes out. So it's um, this is an interesting set for sure. Because if I had to guess, I'm guessing that he's just going to switch out and lose the Whirlpool right here. Probably back out to Corviknight. Uh, Corviknight really, uh, even with Fire Blast, I'd have to see how much it does to Corviknight. He has great Tusk, okay. Doesn't want to go Corv. Maybe thinking he'll click Fire Blast. Or he'll click like Sword Stance, Fire Fang, or something like that. If this is Hydro Pump Garchomp, this is Heat. It's not. It's a... Uh... Outrage, Earthquake, Dragon Tail, Fire Blast. Dang. Orange doesn't know the real cooks. I'm afraid. I don't actually really know what the switch in is. is if it, you're I'm... real, you go Fire Blast and go for the burn. Because <laughs> we know the Town Flame is, um... We, we know this thing has Rock Slide, so, like... Depending on if he gets the turn right, the, uh, Don can kind of just get a kill here. You know, between Ice Spinner, Ground Move, and uh, Rock Slide. If he has yeah. all, all three in his arsenal of coverage. Yeah. Uh, uh, JK can kind of, kind of just kill something. He does go for Ice Spinner. No burn. Uh, no luck on Orange's side there, unfortunately. Uh, Orange does have Roost. I don't know if he feels comfortable going for it here. Uh, I, I do think JK's best play, his safest play, is just to go Lantern. So uh, if he is going to do that, if I was Orange, I would Roost. Yeah, so he does Roost. Does JK call it? So he doesn't necessarily call it, but uh, he still kind of hits him with a neutral ground there. He he's thinking, I live acro, I'll just kill this talon flame is basically what he's thinking, I think. Which is um definitely understandable. Cause uh, I, I would bet he does live acro. I mean the acro is one hundred and ten base power here. Or maybe he's not thinking he doesn't have acro. If I was orange, I would go for acro and see if it kills. Uh, I think this talon flame has a good amount of attack, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's two fifty two attack. So. This is max attack talent flame. This acro has to kill. I mean, I know Tusk is bulky, but he, he's lost his item. Yeah, there it is. It doesn't. Not even close, actually. Uh, yeah, no, that's crazy. Tusk is so bulky, it's yeah, actually insane. Tusk is really fat, and it leads to talent flame dying. Really unfortunate situation. I, I did think initially, I kind of talked myself into it killing. I did think initially it probably doesn't. All this right. is this is good spec here. This is good positioning. Arbeliva is obviously the counter. Yep, he gets the grassy terrain up. That helps uh, JK more, I'd say so, because JK is playing more defensively, just with the team construction compared to. Uh, we'll see if Orange tries to um, like sub here, maybe sub calm mind in some capacity. We'll see if that's the play. He could go uh, out to Quofishisui. It is a Spideff Quofishisui. Orange is just getting a lot of uh, net negative plays. Hap like, bad. Like, uh, that Draining Kiss didn't really do anything, unfortunately. I think you had to click it there. I mean, you can't click Shadow Ball because yeah. there is there, I believe. Uh, um, you just had to click D-Kiss if he wanted to sack the Tusk. Even better for Orange. It's, you know, one of the main threats into his team. Um, Orange is just in a really bad position overall, in my opinion, in terms of just, like, the team versus the team at the moment, the way the game is positioning itself. Lantern yeah. comes out, Drain Punch. All right, we're getting some something going here. This, uh, with Great Tusk weakened so much, this hand does look much better. It actually looks pretty, pretty devastating for the opponent. Nothing can really kill it in one yeah. hit. Outside yeah. of obviously the Tusk, who is still here and is still a threat. Because the Tusk outspeeds, uh, I mean, it doesn't outspeed Tinkaton, obviously. Tinkaton could outspeed it. But it, it could outspeed Tinkaton if Tinkaton's a defensive set, which I believe this one is. Yeah, it is. So it, it probably does outspeed this Tinkaton, so uh, Freight Tusk could literally, like, kill those three ground weeks. Pretty. Yeah. It, it, even at 13%, it could just ground move spam. That's why he kept it around, obviously, if it gets down to, like, those three specifically being alive. If Great Tusk is still yeah. alive, it just wins. So now, I think the hands is... Uh, Orange can't really uh, afford to switch out, in my opinion. I mean, maybe he goes Garchomp. Yeah, yeah, Garchomp comes out. He doesn't want to get burned. Makes sense. He's more comfortable with this getting burned. It doesn't even get burned, though, so that's good. This is really tough position for Orange, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, Orange is in a very tough position, yeah. Because, like, he's having to risk burns now on his Garchomp or his hands. I don't know what Orange is going to click here. If he's, I, I would have to assume JK thinks he can bring out Corviknight. Uh, Corviknight's at a hundred percent. I really don't think Fire Blast because this is like no special attack. I, I if it's like Spideff Corviknight, which it kind of uh, could be, uh, 
I, I don't see how um, Fire Blast 2 KOs Corviknight, so I, I, I think it's pretty free. It, it's like a, a pretty good check here. Even if Corv is max HP and Chomp isn't minus attack, then like it does, it's a guaranteed three at KO. Yeah, three it, which is like fine. JK, because all he needs to do is um, come in, take one, and then like roost or U turn, and just kind of uh, get like a Greninja in or something for a better positioning on the Scarchomp. Like I said, I think JK could go Corviknight. I, I don't recommend sacking Tusk or Arbeliva. I think those two are really important. Uh, I guess you could sack this if you really like are scared about going to Corviknight. Yeah, I see Orange wow. tries to predict and he gets burned for it. No burn, no literal burn, but he gets a. Uh... I think you almost had to EQ there. Like even even if the Corviknight comes in, I get that you want to catch it and make sure you guarantee that three at KO. But like, I feel like you have to EQ there. And is he gonna get him here? Okay, he does go for the double, wow, so that's does good. It again. But uh, th th see, that does no it's damage. Not a three hit KO. Th that's what I was expecting is that Fire Blast was gonna do no damage and that Corviknight was just a good switch in no matter what. Anyways. So this is a Spadef Corv. Yeah, this is Spadef Corv and. Um... Uh, Corviknight literally can like farm guard chomp now I think we've confirmed which is what I was suspecting the whole time yeah this is I feel like yeah orange I feel like does not because do he doesn't even have here. to roost here he can just u-turn keep his momentum and then end game spectre somehow that's like the only w way I'm seeing it I'm wondering if orange will just kick fire blast again hoping that he u-turns predicting the switch so that he gets the rocky helmet plus the fire blast and then Corv is low for the next Garchomp coming and the next exchange. Yeah. That might be what he oh, does. He does Roost. He has Dragon Tail. That's what he was going for there because he was slower, obviously. Arbeliva comes out. Um, this really isn't even bad for JK. I mean, yeah, you could you could Fire Blast again, but... I, I think Fire Blast does like do 50. I, 40 to 50 if I had to guess. Yeah, but now this is free Tusk again. But I guess there's a liquidate. Like, no, you can liquidate or well, something. Well, Tusk is at 13%, so it should die to, like, even Bar Barrage, if I had to guess. Oh, I don't think it dies to a Bar Barrage, but... At 13? <laughs> not from... as I mean, it depends on what this Quillfish is. All right. Um, Orange like finally getting is. some... some. He's getting some plays right. He's getting some momentum. He's going to force Revivroom out. He's going to force the issue here. Forcing Rebel Room out uh, can put JK out of position. So you got to take advantage thinking that Rebel Room could come out here. So what do you do? Yeah, yeah, okay. So I, I, you got to think that Rebel Room's going to come out there. I don't know if this is uh, if this is his answer, then fine. I think Garchomp could have come out there. But um, Garchomp just invites, you know, Corviknight in again. So it really doesn't do anything. So uh, this is fine. He's going to sack. Yeah, he's going to sack Those Lantern. Quick, okay. So he does, he does take advantage fully, uh, which is nice. And then now, this comes back you, out. Do you trade the damage on this or not is the question. Um, I, I think this hands is so important for this end game. I think it is too, It literally yeah. beats the other four that you probably have to trade something else. If Tinkaton's Air Balloon, you obviously go to it. Uh, he, he it, it's, uh, it's not though, obviously. because it's he, rough skin. Rough skin, 1%, okay. So I guess just sacking Chomp because it's not doing anything to the Corv. I well, think well, he realizes that now. Yeah, he, but he has speeds, so um, he had speeds this Tusk. So he, he should keep this Garchomp uh, just for the rough skin on this Tusk, so that it can like guaranteed kill it on the switch. And so the Tusk is really scared to click anything, pretty much. Oh yeah. That that, that that's pretty key here is that like this Garchomp can always trade with this Tusk now, which is yeah. huge for Orange, which gives this Garchomp actual value because it was doing literally nothing against Corviknight. I think Garchomp maybe could have been like spikes or like straight up not come this game. It's really bad against Corviknight usually. Um, yeah. So it's let's see if it's a fire blast. No, it's just a. He gets a bulk up now. I think Hans has to hard switch in. Yeah, or Tinkaton with like Encore. Yeah, I think it is Encore Tinkaton. He goes Quillfish. I don't know if I agree with this. I guess he can taunt. He has Haze. He has Haze. So that's why he's doing this. Okay. Taunt Haze and then... Yeah, he T-spikes. Body press. He's taking Chip, though. Damn. And these T-spikes are just going to go away when Room comes in. 
So yeah. I, don't, I don't love this actually. Because I don't think Quillfish taking this ship is good at all. You need this Quillfish for Arbaliva, kind of. And it also is pretty good against Greninja, because it's max yeah, sped up. He's really trying to get these T-Spikes, despite Rubber Broom, like, still being around. And just switching it and getting rid of them. I mean, it's just free chip on anything, is what this Corv is doing now. Yeah, Corv is just chilling. I think Hands needs to, like, hard switch in. I mean, Quillfish is staying in and taunting now, I assume. He does hard switch in Hands, okay. Makes sense. Now he can uh, freely fire off Thunder Punches, because uh, Lantern is dead and Great Tusk dies to poison if it comes in. This is really bad. I feel like I feel like he might have predicted the Arbaliva there, but I, I think it's unnecessary, 100% unnecessary to I, do that. I think it is. I think it is too. All right. Well, he has Encore on this, so he gets out of this at least technically. Yeah. I don't know why this didn't come out sooner, but... I, so, like, what happens if he just spams bulk up forever, and then, like... I, I guess Tinkaton eventually wins, because it has knockoff, so it's just going to spam knock and do 2% forever. I mean, it could. There's yeah, T-Wave. Yeah, T-Wave, and then it, it's going to knock forever and do 1% until the game, literally. Until... Here comes Quillfish. I, I, I don't get this. I think he should have knocked. I think he should have knocked and literally just forced Haze. it to switch. Yeah, the Haze is fine. Like, all this is fine. But why not just... I, I don't know. I would have spammed Encore over it. Because you outspeed, so you can Encore lock him. Yeah, I feel like you definitely could have just... I, I, uh... I think Encore locking and then going for knockoff over and over and forcing something to lose its item. Because, like, Corviknight would die eventually. So something has to switch in and something would lose its item to the knockoff. I think that would have been, like, fine. It would, it would have taken, like, yeah. 50 turns, but it would have been fine. Because now Rev is in... And Sax Chomp. Yeah, and I don't love this positioning anymore. Like, the Toxic Spike's gone, and Chomp is dead. I don't know why he didn't stay in with the Encore and just click uh, Knock over and over. I mean, it would have taken, yeah. like, literally forever, but... It... Yeah. This Spectre is also in a really tough position. Like, it's supposed to clean, and there's just, like... Everything's still at 100%. It can't do anything while the Arbalev is here. Um... He has to go. Like Corby, really. He has to go hands and take a lot of chip, and honestly, probably like if this rubber room terrors, it might just die to two gunks. Yeah, you just have to go hands here. You go hands. You earthquake. But he's gonna t uh, if he terrors and like he doesn't die and he gunks twice. I think he kills you, and then I think the game's over, which is really unfortunate. I think Don or JK, I mean, is just free to gunk twice, Terra and gunk twice. You live, and you kill this, which is, like, the only thing that can really beat you. So, he's playing pretty passive with his Corviknight right now, which is fine. You know, Corviknight does kind of wall. It really appears as though this Hands doesn't have an electric move, which is really interesting. Yeah, I mean, he's playing completely like he has no electric move. Our Believer is pretty free. Yeah, I mean, it was made for this, right? So, he has Calm Mind. Alright, good. So if you're Calm Mind and have Substitute, you have a chance here. Are you Calm Mind Sub? Let me check. No Sub. Alright, Calm Mind Taunt. Interesting. I think Sub was probably, like, slightly better. Uh, just for situations exactly like this, because you can Sub if he's Leech Seed anyways, and then you have that Protective Barrier, and then you can start Calm Mind Spamming again, and that Sub is still up, and you're kind of in a really, really nice position that you're not in right now. I, I, I think Sub could have actually won the game here. Um, but either way, he should probably like taunt or call mind again. Draining Kiss does nothing, so there's really no value in it. Uh, it's, uh, getting the Spadef boost again will help you live the uh, Giga Drain more easily and make your Draining Kiss do more so you get more health back. It, it's just way better. He taunts. He can't psych up. Alright, that's good. Maybe taunt was just for the psych up. If so, then that's obviously a really uh, good bring on uh, Orange's part. And I have to commend him because I did not anticipate psych up uh, Arbaliva. That's a, that's a really cool idea there. Okay, he's getting the confusion. So obviously that's bad for uh, Orange. Alluring voice. 
You know, these guys, it's really cool. Every time it kind of flips in one person's favor, it flips right back to the other side. All right, let's see if he gets confused. Shadow Ball's about to come out. There's Steel. Confusion ends. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Is this over? Arbeliva comes back out. Spectre just sweeps. Wow. A clutch taunt set that I didn't even see. I, I never anticipated uh, Psych up uh, Arbeliva. Be, that, very clutch taunt Spectre from Orange. I'm very impressed by this Spectre set because I didn't see the value in the taunt over sub until that sp Psych up came out. Uh, I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words for how well this is going, how well this set is working. He really needs one more and he can just, you know, draining kiss. Spectre is really kind of just cleaning up the game at this point. He doesn't even do it. He didn't really need it. Spec's going crazy. Yeah. Orange has completely turned this game around with Spectre. The taunt set is majorly clutch. Made the psych up not work. Don't be, yeah, don't be greedy. Just taunt. Yeah, because if he psych ups, you just lose. So that the only way you could lose this game is by being greedy. So just start, you know, draining, kissing. Everything's going that the way you need it to. Tech is insane. Yeah, and the taunt tech to block it because I thought sub was better, and I was talking about that. And then uh, the, the taunt to block psych up is just clutch. I didn't I didn't even see that as like what it was for. So that's a, a great bring from Orange. But I, if it was Scarf, I think he would have brought it out after he sacked Rep of Room. He was a uh, he was banking on a confusion hit with the uh, Spectre when he used the Luring Voice. He didn't get it. Mm. Korv comes out here. He calm minds again. I mean, it really doesn't matter what Orange does at this at this point. He's... Okay, so he's trying to get these, these healing turns to have, make him live longer. He's trying to stall some taunts, it looks like. He's doing, he's doing everything he can. But I mean, yeah. taunt has way too much PP. He's trying to stall Draining Kisses too, actually. Oh, interesting. 11 Draining Kisses left. This is actually not, um... Oh, hold on. Interesting. This could be, this could be crazy. If... Uh, I, I'm actually... Can he stall 11 more Draining Kisses? That's the question. With, like, switching between Corv and... Uh, Orange is realizing it too. He's like, oh shit. This could actually be kind of dangerous. Yeah, he has to get every 50-50 right. It's still in Orge's favor, clearly, because he's a plus six uh, Spectre, obviously. Uh, but it, this is interesting, I will say that. Because, like, if, if he taunts and then the thing Giga drains and gets more health back, and then, like, it's Draining Kiss is three-shotting, and then he goes Corviknight on a Draining Kiss and comes back on a Shadow Ball to get health back again. It, it, all this is very interesting for uh, JK to have a potential chance to maybe win just by walling Spectre hard with uh, Arbeliva if he runs out of Draining Kisses. Yeah. Because if this Spectre dies, then, like we said, the 1% Great Tusk just kills all of the remaining three. Just dead, dead, dead to Headlong Rush. Yeah, it, this... It literally all comes down to this Arbeliva and this Spectreer. So they're really thinking about it now. I mean, I, I think JK is probably... He knows what he has to do. He was confident last turn in doing it. So he's probably clicked already. I think Orange is trying to figure out the best way to navigate his draining kisses. Would be my guess is what's yeah. happening right now. For sure. So he does taunt. There's the taunt. Giga Drain, yep, gets health back. It's doing less now because the Spadef is uh, higher. But the uh, he goes Corviknight, all right. Yep. Does he call it with Shadow Ball? Does not. That still does an insane amount. Yeah, it's still good damage. Especially defensive Corviknight. He sacks Tusk. I think that was unnecessary. I think he, if he really wants to win this, going Arbeliva. Okay, so he's kind of he, he's kind of saying, "Hey, I'm Scarf," but uh, I don't know yeah. for sure if he is, is it Scarf. Night Slash? Is it physical or special? I guess is the question because this grin has not come out at all. I think I think Orange has to take the gamble that it's that it's not physical. Yeah, Orange has to stay in. That's how he wins this game, is by sweeping the endgame with Spectre. 
just click uh, Draining Kiss. Or you could Shadow Ball to conserve Draining Kiss HPP because it probably kills anyways, especially if he's protein. Even if he's not protein, I bet it still kills. Did he Shadow Ball? No, he Draining Kiss. Interesting. He okay. That still has seven left because of pressure. Arbaliva. Shadow Ball. Okay, here we go. Yeah, pressure pressure is devastating this. This is really interesting right now. Overnight I think, can only take two more draining kisses though. I think sacking the um the Tusk wasn't in the play. The, wasn't the play because it, it, it beat these last three, man. Like easily beat these last three. If anything, like because it, it, it wouldn't even be a I don't know if it'd be a sack, but you sack the Greninja and keep Tusk. I, I don't know. Because all Greninja is doing is baiting draining kisses right now. Yeah, uh, Iron Hands can beat it. Tinkaton, not really. Neither can Quillfish, but Iron Hands definitely beats it. Um, so I think... Because even but... if he gets through this Spectre, like with the Arbelieve attack we're mentioning, I don't actually think he beats these last three now that Tusk is dead. Unfortunately. So, um... Yeah. But, like, I think Iron Hands actually stays in on all three and kills them all. Although, I am convinced the Iron Hands doesn't have an electric move. Because he refuses to go for it on a Corviknight like two or three times now. Yeah, it is kind of crazy. So he goes Corv. Back into Corv. The Shadow Ball. Yeah, nice. Oh, Shadow Ball. Okay. This game is officially over. It's just D kiss after D kiss after D kiss. Yeah, taunt. taunt here. Make sure the Psych Up doesn't come out. Smart, smart play. Yep. And now you just spam D kiss. Yep, it's a three at KO. That's Still does 42%, which is nuts. Print. Oh, shit. Oh. A Draining Kiss still recovers that, though. Yeah, Draining it's Kiss. It's going to have to be, like, another crit right here. Okay, he didn't even go for it. Does he, is he out of Giga Drains? He has four left. <gasps> oh, shit. Another crit. Holy shit. Holy shit. I think Hand still wins though. I it's think, it, I think Hand too little, win. too late. If this was Terra Fairy Arbelifa and he didn't Terra his Rubber Room because the Terra did nothing, and he Terraed it right now, maybe that'd be huge. That'd or if he was like Terra Grass, but unfortunately he did Terra the Rubber Room, so it's. Oh yeah. It, it's, uh, uh, dude. This game is insane. This game has been so good. 60 he lives. returns. A learn voice does nothing. I mean, we, it's it, got to be AV hands, right? Yeah, this is an AV hands, I'm guessing. I mean, I, I don't think Greninja can kill. And I don't think Greninja can kill any of these three. I mean, it can kill Quillfish at 50, I have to guess. I say it could probably kill Quillfish. It could probably kill Tinkaton if it's like Specs Hydro Pump. I don't know the investment on Tinkaton and everything, but yeah. Well, I guess no, if this Drain is, Punch just kills. Uh, I mean, if he's, it might not kill if he's like, yeah, it does 50, but he just Drain Punches and he gets, yeah, oh, he just kills. Yeah, because he's not. That he, seems he, like, was that Specs? Yeah, that might have been Specs. I think it had to have been. All right. Yeah, I, 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 like... Imagine if that last Mon was Tusk instead of, um... Greninja, Greninja. there. Greninja. Didn't he win with Headlong Rush, like, uh, three times? Uh, Tinkaton could outspeed if it has speed it and doesn't, Clayruff. It doesn't, which is pretty crazy. It had... It, I, it, it probably could have. I, I mean, I guess he could have... What he could have done is gone Quillfish and then, um... Got the Intimidate lower, sack Tinkaton, go Quillfish again, and then go Hands, who was at like 93. And then Hands oh, probably yeah. lives headlong at minus two attack, I have to guess. Because Hands is really yeah. fat. But, but it would have been way closer if he didn't sack the Tusk. I think sacking the Tusk actually, because I think he actually played that endgame, considering how Spectre was going pretty well. I, I think sacking the Tusk was actually what ended up uh, causing the loss. Like, yeah. ultimately. Yeah. All right, close game, really good game. Uh, thank you all for watching, and with that, we are out. Reno, baby! Yeah.